This is our Autism 101 video series where we're going to be discussing the basics of autism, what is autism, what are some of those early signs, how is it diagnosed, and what are the best first steps for parents to take if they're having concerns for their child. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, we will link below in the description to our full blog post and our podcast episode, so check those out. And don't forget, if you have not yet downloaded your free autism checklist, you can check it out at www.warriorfamilies.com forward slash autism checklist. We will link to it below and you can download your free checklist where we pull together a lot of these common signs and the best next steps for parents to take if they're starting to have concerns in a quick, easy format. So make sure you get your hands on that. And let's jump in to part one of Autism 101. Today, we wanted to talk a little bit for um, those parents who are brand new to this diagnosis or maybe don't even have a diagnosis yet, but just are you know, in the position where you're starting to see your child have some challenges or some delays or you're having some concerns and you're wondering, you just have more questions about what autism is, what it means, um, what, how to get a diagnosis, where to go, who to talk to. So this is really for you. You know, autism is very unique to every, every child. So, you know, you, you hear out there when you have one child, we see one, meet one child with autism, you've met one child with autism. And that's so true because it truly is a spectrum. There is no blood tests. There is no specific diagnostic single test that tells you that your child has autism. It is really um, a spectrum of behaviors, of challenges that they may see, delays that they may have. Um, there are some screenings and some diagnostic tools out there we'll talk about, but it's, it's really a spectrum and it's really looking at the child at a whole when we're considering a diagnosis of autism. In general, again, th these are very general, this is very general information because every child is just so different. I mean, we have twin boys that are nine years old and they both have autism and they are completely different. They present completely different, their strengths, their challenges, their personalities, I mean, everything is night and day from each other. So you truly have to look at this from a very broad scope. Some of the characteristics that you may see that are typical to some children with autism that they may have. And again, of, of all these characteristics, your child, a child with autism may have one of them. They may have all of them. They may have varying degrees of a couple of them. It's just, it, it truly is a spectrum. So um, some of the things that you most typically see in children with autism or a, a, in a variety of children with autism is challenges with social skills, with repetitive behaviors, with speech or delayed speech or difficulty with speech. Again, it's not every child though. Some kids with autism have perfect speech and have no issues with speech and language. So it, it really, you really have to look at it with a broad view. So social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech concerns, or issues with challenges with nonverbal communication, understanding body language. Also, depending on the, on the severity of ASD, Children with autism may have challenges with some sort of their sensory system, with some piece of their sensory system. They have tend to have sensitivities. So it may be hearing, it may be that they're very sensitive to loud sounds or certain pitches, it may be sights, it may be smells, it may be touch, certain textures. It's, it's different with every kid. Um, but they, they tend to be, be more prone to have sensitivities. Um, in their sensory system. GI issues can be very common, sleep issues can be very common, and also anxiety and um, attention deficits. So those are some of the common things, common characteristics you may see to a certain degree with a child with autism. Again, just because your child has one of those things does not mean that they have autism. You may have a child that ends up being diagnosed with autism that didn't have one of those things that stand out. Or you could have a child that has multiple of those challenges that does not have autism. So just, you know, take it with a grain of salt to know that really those are just some common characteristics that you see with some children with ASD. 
So in 2013, the American Psychiatric Association changed the diagnostic, diagnostic criteria for autism. They took four, what was previously four separate diagnoses and lumped them together under the new diagnosis code for autism spectrum disorder. So they basically combined autistic disorder, childhood disintegrative disorder, pervasive developmental disorder or PDD, and Asperger syndrome. They took those four separate diagnoses and lumped them together under the term and the diagnosis code for autism spectrum disorder. So now you have a child that is diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and that spectrum is even broader because all of those previous diagnoses are now all included under autism spectrum disorder. Um, there's no known cause. It's thought to be a combination of environmental and genetic factors, but there's no specific, you know, one specific cause for any child and there's no cure. But there are, our kiddos have challenges that make their life more difficult, make things harder for them, that of course we want to do what we can to work to help them with those challenges, to decrease um, their frustration, to improve their skills, to help them learn, to help them socialize, all, all of the things depending on your child and what they may struggle with. The focus of treatment at this point is not to cure autism, it's to focus on whatever challenges your child may have, whatever skills may be delayed, and focus on those to try to help them improve their skills um, and function at the highest quality that they can, have the highest quality of life, um, and just make things as, as positive as possible for them. And to really focus on their strengths and you know how we can strengthen the things, the strengths that they have, and looking at their weaknesses or the things that are challenging for them and using different therapies to try to help improve those. So that's what we're treatment is focused right now, is on all the different therapies and different challenges that they have. So we're looking at sleep, we're looking at GI issues, we're looking at, you know, anxiety and things like that. And are those things individually, if you fix one of those things or help with one of those things, the autism doesn't go away, but it certainly can make their life a lot better. So that's where treatment is focused now. I hope you found that helpful. If so, don't forget to like and comment below and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our further videos. Then let's jump into part two where we talk more about the autism screening process, how it's diagnosed, and next up for parents who are having concerns.